This is the Veteran Woman Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to empowering, inspiring, and encouraging veteran women to overcome their struggles and celebrate their successes. Now, here's your host, the one and only Ariel Renal. Yes, 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 yes. He always shows mercy on us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Well, yes. Well, I'm Sky Wonders, and welcome to my show, Unmuted, Your Voice Matters. We are live every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on Never Had It So Good Sports Media Network. I allow my listeners to share their thoughts and interact with myself and my guests. So call in at 347-855-8867 and get unmuted. Well, first, I want to thank James Deshaies for a great show on Thoughts, Love, and Reflections. He comes on every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Well, tonight, I would like to welcome and introduce my special guest, Ariel Raynell Dandridge. She is a certified life and veteran development coach. She's the founder of the Veteran Woman LLC. It's a company dedicated to supporting and empowering female veterans as they transition from the military to civilian life. Well, welcome, 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 Ariel. How are you this evening? I am doing well. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for what you're doing. I absolutely love the title of the show, Unmuted, Your Voice Matters, because that is my whole thing with the veteran woman is your voice matters. And I want people to share what they're going through so we can build awareness and stuff. So thank you so, so much. You are so welcome. It's such a pleasure. I just thought after reading your bio, wow, I am very impressed and I am very enthused about what you are doing. And I don't, I didn't want to read your bio. I wanted you to Tell us more about you and what made you start the Veteran Woman. Oh, you're not going to let me get off easy, huh? (laughs) No, I'm not. No, I'm not. All right. So where do I start? (laughs) I'm kind of nervous. So I'm like, let me pull up my bio so I remember. (laughs) (laughs) I know you started, you, you were in the Army for 12 years, correct? Yes, I was. And I was active duty Army for 12 years, and I was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia, um, Okinawa, Japan, Naples, Italy, and then finally Fort Riley, Kansas. And wow. um, I'm in Kansas, and I've been out for about two, a little over two years, about two and a half years now. And that is my transition, I know, was rough. And that's one reason why I look to help other women veterans and veterans in general who are transitioning as well. Because I'm finding out a lot about the transition process that we don't talk about in the transition classes. And that's like the emotional side, because we're taught how to do resumes. We're taught how to do job searches, interviewing, and, you know, setting up LinkedIn and social media profiles to be marketable, how to network. But we just don't cover the emotional impact of the transition. So that's one of my, my things that I really want to talk about when it comes to the veteran women and transitioning. So when you say the emotional side, explain to us, like, cause we don't know. And I want, you know, and I, I think this is like a, a very um, important topic to talk about because Regular civilians don't know what veterans go through. Um, we don't know the emotional, you know, side of it. We don't know coming out of it what you're faced with and what not. So tell me as far as emotional, the types of things that you guys go through emotionally and um, mentally. Well, well, during the transition or during service or both? Both. Both. So... <laughs> Where do I start with that? Because I'm still learning a lot as far as how to talk about and explain the emotions that we go through. They they really range depending on the person's personality, where they're stationed at, what their job is, 
and what their daily tasks are. It really, really ranges. But in the military, we're taught camaraderie. We're taught teamwork. We're taught structure and like a chain of command. And Uh that's one of the things that I noticed that and accountability as well and responsibility. And those are the things that I took for granted, I guess, when I was in the Uh military. And then when I became a civilian, it was like, okay, I have nobody to report to. I don't have to follow a chain of command. I don't have to be 30 minutes early to, to something. It's just, and then, but I also miss, the biggest thing that I miss is that camaraderie, um, the teamwork and having that group of people to talk to because it's like we have our own language. And, uh, and I didn't realize that until I got out. I was like, wow, you know, we have our own lingo and, it's interesting to get around other veterans because you don't have to try to explain things. They just, it automatically clicks. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it with lingo and everything. So one of my goals is to learn how to articulate all of that to civilians who work with veterans and to like their spouses and everybody who comes in contact with veterans so they can better understand us and what we go through. And and I can't articulate it all the time. And of course, everybody has different situations and experiences. So that's where I'm reaching out to other women veterans to come and share their story and talk about the changes that need to be made, the resources that they need, and just what they need as a woman veteran. Well, I noticed in your bio, you stated like you held back by a lack of direction and you had limited resources, but also you dealt with personal trauma resulting from domestic violence, sexual harassment, and military sexual assault. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, can you, can you go into detail a little bit more detail what happened? Like, and I know this is probably a little common in the military more so than they tell it. So with the domestic violence, I when I came in in 2002, I was married to a civilian. He was civilian. Um, we were married before I got into the military. And it, we had been married about two to one and a half to two years. And then I came into the military and then we were married about three years into that. And that's when the domestic violence came in because he would beat the hell out of me, literally. Wow. And I never thought that I would stay in a situation like that, allow myself to continue in a relationship like that. But it taught me a lot about domestic violence and why women stay and the cycle of violence and stuff. And actually, um, I'm writing a chapter about it in a book collaboration called Her Story 2 that will be coming out very soon. And that's where I share my story about domestic violence and the things that I've gone through with my relationships. Um, wow. So I'm a big domestic violence advocate. With the sexual assault, I was actually a victim advocate, which became a sexual assault, harassment, response, and prevention, <laughs> sharp advocate. And I would work with veterans or I would work with soldiers who needed to report harassment or sexual assault. And under the umbrella of sexual assault is rape and certain types of touching and stuff like that. So when I was doing that, I had actually, I had experienced my own sexual assault. I was raped by my supervisor and Mm -hmm. um, I won't, many details live on the air, but if anybody wants more details, they can definitely contact me. But right. um, I was right supervisor and I was brand new to the duty station that I was at. And it took me forever to adjust to that, that duty station. Um, but I never told anyone because I didn't believe in the system. I, I'm sorry. I was skeptical. I didn't believe in a system. I saw how people would get laughed at, brushed under the rug, and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, granted, the military is doing things to help. The military and the VA are doing things to help mitigate and reduce the things that are going on. I will give them that. 
just it takes a while for us to see them at the lower echelons a lot of times. But as um as a victim advocate, that was probably out of my I think it was about ten years I had been in. Being a victim advocate, I felt like I was walking in my passion and purpose. And I always say I hate that there was a need for that job because that means people were being sexually harassed and sexually assaulted. But it, what I loved about it was I was able to be the person that would listen. Um, I was non, not judgmental. And my goal was to advocate for the person regardless of what everybody else may say, because it came down to um, superior officers being being blamed for harassment or sexual assault. And then, of course, some people look at it as, oh, no, an officer or a higher-up wouldn't do that. But when a soldier came to me, I believed them, and I advocated for them. And by advocating, it was providing resources, telling about their rights, or even sitting with them in court. Um, so, And that really kind of helped me get past what I had gone through because I still had never shared it. But I understood, I was coming from a point of understanding when I would advocate because I had gone through it and I understood how, you know, you could not believe in the system and you just want to find that person who believes you and who trusts you and who can be your voice when you can no longer speak. So those are so sexual assault, domestic violence are things I really, really advocate for. Also, another thing, um, after I got out, the VA diagnosed me with PTSD, um, with anxiety and depression. So and that's another thing I advocate for are those who have suffered from PTSD or anxiety and depression and getting past that that darkness and that roadblock that it causes sometimes like emotionally and, and mentally and physically just getting past that and actually living and walking in their purpose. Right. Well, as a life coach, how do you help women to get through those, through those things? Are you um, partnered with the VA or anything to help, you know, I, do you have a certain class or is it just your coaching that helps them get through? Tell us how you are able to help these women who are um, dealing with PTSD, anxiety, depression, and whatnot. So I have one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I work solely and personally with women who come to me. And how that works is that we'll usually meet somewhere or have a call because I I work with people all over the world because with today's technology, that's too easy. So either we meet over the over a phone call or in person and we get to know one another because when you're talking to an advocate, when you're talking to a coach, it's important that you build that rapport and that you trust them and that you feel like you can be open and honest. So we do, um, we do that call. And then if they decide that they want me to coach them through that's what we do. And the biggest thing as a coach is I believe that we have everything we need inside of us. I mean, of course, there comes education. We always need to be learning. Never stop learning. But the, the skills, the mindset, that passion that's inside of us, I help draw that out because I know it's in there somewhere especially as being a veteran, I got so used to being told what to do, where to be, how to be, where to go, all of that. And I kind of lost myself. And so when the transition came, it was like, okay, what does Ariel want to do? Because now I don't have anybody telling me what to do and I am free. I can do whatever I want to. And so I had to go back and remember the things that I love to do, that I, Ariel, and not Fast Sergeant Dandridge, um, the things that I love to do. And so I help other veterans do the same thing, rediscover their passions or find out what they want to do next in their lives. Um, what was your other question about coaching? Well, and it was something else. <laughs> yeah. Do you partner like with the uh, VA hospital? Do you, do you have any 
connections with them. Like, cause I think this is an awesome, you know, uh, business that you have to, to have someone, I, I think it will be a great program if you're connected with the VA hospital and, and things like that. So are you connected with any other entities such as the VA hospital? That's on my list of goals for 2017 is to awesome. get in, um, a referral or some kind of yeah. partnership connection with the VA, the transition centers um, that are on base, the vet centers, and like the American Legions, the DAVs, the BFW, yeah. like let them know like what I offer and, and, and how we can work together to help. Because I yeah. really believe in collaboration. And um, the other thing I will, um, in 2017 coming, is my Facebook group, The Veteran Woman, The Veteran Woman Network, which will be like masterminding and group meetings and retreats and all the fun stuff. And we just get to be women together. Mm-hmm. And another thing, a podcast that I will be launching so we can talk about the issues that affect us. Awesome. I'm not about politics. I'm not about the red tape. And, and that is one thing that I hate. So if somebody tries to stop our voices or stops us from talking, then I know that that's probably a partnership that may not be, may not fit with me. So just realize that my stance is, on the non-political side and the non-red tape. Cause I know it gets so frustrating going through all the red tape and mm-hmm. waiting on appointments forever and forever and just not getting what you need. So that's why I want to provide that one-on-one and that um, non-judgmental, non-political point of view. Awesome. 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 Well, I, you know what, I, I think I'm going to um, allow one of my callers on. He is uh, a dear friend of mine, and he is a retired veteran. Let me get him on the phone. Henry. Hey, what's going on this guy? How are you? Hi. <laughs> Ariel, this is Henry Washington. He is uh, um, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Henry, what do you think about what Ariel is the company that she has, the the veteran yeah. woman? Yeah, uh, Ariel. First of all, I'm Henry Washington. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm so glad Sky is having this show because it's it's near and dear to my heart. Even though you are addressing women, um, I've served 25 years in the military, retired uh, just three years ago now, and uh, I was diagnosed with uh, PTSD as well. Um, thank, you for your I, service. thank you. And thank you for your service, but you're hitting the nail right on the head, man. You, you've said a lot about PTSD and some of those things you've said about, um, the abuse and those things, those things also cause PTSD, um, not mm-hmm. just, not just combat, um, experiences, but I have to tell your audience guy that PTSD means post-traumatic stress disorder. Meaning, you know, we have experienced something, some type of trauma, and we're having flashbacks or we're having emotional numbness and avoidance. Uh, And I think uh, Ariel said it earlier, you know, about, you know, I know I have difficulty sleeping, um, but, you know, it's that trauma that causes that PTSD. So when it comes to to, uh, my PTSD, Ariel, I was you know, avoiding places. When I got back into the States and I retired in each mission, um, and I deployed seven times in the combat zone. So each mission you come back, they give you, they take you through um, this process to where you sit down with a a medical physician and they ask you questions about, hey, how do you feel about returning back to society? That's good and all what the military does. However, that's not enough. Because we as leaders in the military, you know, you have to, you know, be cognizant of what's going on, not only in your environment, but with your soldiers as well. So, you know, Ariel, you're, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. I mean, I didn't, you know, you know, I struggled at home um, after the deployments. I struggled 
I didn't have time to think about what was going on at home when I'm deployed. So um, when I finally got home, it was rough for me to to manage home. I, I felt as if I had to be back in the in the combat zone because I mm-hmm. felt more comfort, comfortable in the combat zone. I know that's weird for a lot of you listeners, but, you know, we in the military, we feel more comfortable in the combat zone, to be honest with you. We'd rather, we don't want to deal with what's going on back in society. That's how we think. That's just how we think. Um, so, Ariel, I, I really appreciate what you're doing um, from the perspective of, you know, helping the veterans, uh, especially our females. I think a lot of issues in the military is we don't, uh, we, we're getting better with it when it comes to PS, mm-hmm. PTSD. Definitely. <clears throat> like we, yeah, but we didn't hone in on it until it was, you know, we've had some deaths due to PTSD. And I think we could have saved some lives if we had jumped on it early. So you're doing awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Henry, for sharing that. (laughs) Sorry. Thank you for sharing that because I know it's hard to talk about PTSD and Mm -hmm. the experiences, and especially for males as well. It's it's hard. Right. And right. thank you for saying what PTSD is, because I forget. I have to remember, like, uh-huh. translate, <laughs> translate, yeah. acronym, trans- or explain what the spelling means and stuff. So thank you so right. much for that and for your input. And I would love to stay connected with you and get more feedback and, and thoughts and stuff from you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, definitely. Scott has my info. Um, she can definitely pass it to you. And uh, we can uh, definitely collaborate and, you know, kind of yeah. understand how, we, how we're going to help women uh, and men with this. Yeah, and men, issue. definitely. I will, I will not turn a man away, trust me, when it comes mm-hmm. to helping them and coaching them through transitions and stuff. So definitely if somebody said, if a male veteran came to me and said, hey, Ariel, I want to take advantage of your programs or the group or whatever, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's more than welcome. Awesome. 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 Henry, well, that's thank awesome. you so much. And and Ariel, Henry is someone that you would would want to connect with because um he's going to do something soon about PTSD as well and things like right. that. So I I think you guys right. will be able to um I think that would be a she would be a great guest for you, um, Henry. He has his, his yeah. show as well, Peace Within Radio. And it's awesome. it's an awesome show. Come on right after Sky. <laughs> yes, yes. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I will most definitely connect you two together. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, it's so great to meet you, uh, Ariel. You know, I wish you the best with your business. You're doing a great job, and it's a great cause. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Okay, Sky. I'm going to go and get ready, and uh, thank you so much for having me on. Henry, I so appreciate you always. Thank you, babe. No doubt. All right. All Good right. Night. Good night. Yes, 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 yes. Aria, we're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back. We have another caller online. Uh, we'll have her call in, but I, there's some more questions that I would like to ask you. So when we come back from our short break, we will get back to those questions and let our listeners um, be heard, okay? Kent, do you mind if I read something real quick right before the break? Sure. Go ahead. You can read it right now. Absolutely. All right. Because um, Henry was talking about like what PTSD is and kind of like the emotions and the feelings. And mm-hmm. um, I posted something, I shared something on Facebook the other day because it was perfect about explaining anxiety and depression. And it says having anxiety and depression is like being scared and tired at the same time. It's the fear of failure, but no urge to be productive. It's wanting friends, but socializing. It's wanting to be alone, but not wanting to be lonely. It's caring about everything, then caring about nothing. It's Mm. feeling everything, then feeling paralyzingly numb. That is so true. I just, I just commented on, I just commented on that on your, on your page. I just saw that. And that is so, so, so true. I've experienced, I didn't experience PTSD, but mm-hmm. maybe I do have it because I, I am a victim of violence. 
as well. And it scared the mess out of me. I mean, I, I, it, it, it was to the point where I was afraid for my life, me and my son's life. And I became depressed and I became, you know, I just withdrew myself. I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I was worried all the time. I didn't care about myself anymore. You know, it, it, it was, it was a trying time for me about five years, four, four or five years ago for me. And, and that's how I came up with my business 40 plus wonders to celebrate women over 40 and to let them know that no matter what you have gone through all these years after 40, um, you can conquer all and you can be um, and live your dreams and be whatever you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? So um, I have experienced that. And, and that's what made me come out with 40 plus wonders and wanting to empower, motivate and inspire women over 40. And, and now I am three years strong and now I have this radio show where I can help even more and help others be spotlighted and share the, the, the greatness that they are doing um, in their communities and amongst people. So I, I just commend you of what you're doing. And um, this is like a, this is a very serious topic to me because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are stuck and they can't get out of that depression. They can't get out of that. They can't shake it. And sometimes some of us who were once depressed and we came out of it, sometimes it, we can easily slip back into it. Yeah. And that's scary. That is so yeah. scary. And I find myself sometimes going there, you know, I go there, but thank God for the people in my life that love me so much that don't allow me to swallow, get swallowed by it. You know what I'm saying? They, they kind of, they support me and they, and they push me and they, they just continue to, to just continue to push and, and, and inspire me and, and things like that to get me back out of that funk. But I, I can go into a funk and it's really hard for me to come out sometimes. And it, it is a little bit, of, it's a tad bit of depression. So like, again, again, um, I would love to like, you know, do something with you more oh, on yeah. this and, and not just as a veteran, you know, um, as a, as a depression thing period amongst our people mm-hmm. and talking about that is it, so important. Definitely. Thank you so much for letting me share that because I thought that sure. fit in real well with what um, Henry was explaining at the time too. And it's something that I think people need to hear. Yes, it, most definitely. Most definitely. Yep. Well, let me take this break real quick and we're going to come back and we'll talk a little bit more about Ariel. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold tight. Hold tight. Well, yes, this is Sky Wonders, and you are on Unmuted, Your Voice Matters, live every Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on Never Had It So Good Sports Media Network. Join me, Sky Wonders, and her guest, Ariel Wigfall Dandruff. She's a certified life and veteran development coach, founder of the Veteran Woman, LLC. We're having real talk and real, real conversation tonight, and we are discussing reigniting our passion in life. And, and right now we, we are just talking about Ariel's business. She's a life coach for veterans and she helps women who, who are transitioning from the military uh, life into civilian life. And this it, is an amazing thing, but we just got done talking about um, PTSD, which is, can you tell me what that is? Ariel post traumatic stress disorder. Stress disorder, yes. And we were talking about anxiety and depression. I have a question though. I have I I have another question. So mm-hmm. when you when you are done with military, are you saying that they don't give you any type of resources or benefits once you step away from the military, once you are you sign your papers and you are peace out, I'm done. I mean, <laughs> do they <laughs> is they I mean, I'm sure they are aware, like, these people are going through this. I, I, this is a common topic. 
So you're, you're telling me that they don't prepare you guys to go, go back into civilian life? No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, so what I'm finding out, because like I said, I've been out for about two and a half years, um, and I went through the Army's transition program. So my um, And through that program, we talked about job searching, interviewing, um, resume writing, you know, connecting your network, how to network, how to give an elevator speech, different things like that. And of course, and it depends on how you get out of the military too. You have honorable and dishonorable discharges. You have chapters, end of service, and retirement. And based on how you get out can affect the amount of benefits you get. But the VA does quite a bit as well. They have therapy, they have health care, I mean, a full service health care, and they even have homes for soldiers who aren't able to live somewhere else or don't have a home. They have a homelessness program. They have a lot at the VA, but we don't always know about everything that's offered. And then there, of course, are other nonprofit organi- organizations that help veterans and mm-hmm. um organizations like mine that help veterans too. So it's not, it's not necessarily that it's not there. It's there, but a lot of times we may not know what's available. And I know with me trying to search and find different things, it was frustrating for me. Um, So I, another thing that I um, want to do or that I do is connect people to the resources that they need. So I'll do the research to find out like, If you're homeless, I'll do the research to find out the resources available for homeless veterans. And um, if you're suffering from PTSD and you need to find the nearest VA clinic, just different things like that, just connecting them to the right resources and and are bringing the resources to them that they need to, you know, successfully transition, smoothly transition, and just integrate back into the civilian world if um, integration is a good word, I don't know. But yeah, there are resources out there. I'm not gonna say that the military and the VA doesn't do anything. It's just knowing about everything that's available. And depending on where, I'm finding out, depending on where you live, some VAs still have like a bad reputation, a bad name. And like with mine here in Topeka, Kansas, I absolutely love it. But unfortunately, some veterans that I've spoken to are not as fortunate. So just just helping out, filling that gap wherever it needs to be filled is uh, one of my biggest things. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, real quick, um, and I'm going to have you repeat it again, but tell us how we can we can follow you, how we can contact you. Can you give us that information? Yes, my website is coachariel.com. That's C O A C H A I R I A L dot com. And also, since we were um, going to talk about, you know, reigniting and finding your passion in life, you can go to coachariel.com slash ebook, which is C O A C H A I R I A L dot com slash E B O O K. You can also find me on Facebook as Ariel Renal, and you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn as Ariel Renal, and you can find me on Instagram as The Veteran Woman. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Tonight's discussion, uh, topic discussion, is about reigniting our passion in life. What reignited you to help other fellow veteran women? What or who reignited you? So the funny thing is when I, right when I got out, I didn't want anything to do with military. And I would actually have panic attacks anytime I went on post or whenever I was around a group of soldiers, I would have a panic attack. Um, But then, so because like dealing with the depression and anxiety, the back and forth, the back and forth. And the fact that I could, I, I still can't like hold a regular job. My social anxiety still is a problem for me. Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, Hey, I, 
I'm not supposed to just be sitting here in the bed. There's something I need to be doing. There's something I'm supposed to do. And I hired a life coach and a business coach because coaches have coaches. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, my business coach, I remember her talking to me, um, helping me find out, you know, who I could serve the best. And when it came down to the bottom line, it was women veterans. And I remember laughing like, ha, <laughs> the very group that I've been avoiding is the very group that I need to be serving. And then Felicia Phillips, I met her at um, Epic in April, March or April time frame last year. And she came and did a VIP day with me. I hired her as my coach. And, um, and she sat down and she listened to my story. And that's actually when the veteran woman brand was discovered. And she was just like so excited. <laughs> And wow. Said, and I was like, this is it. Thank you so much. Cause she made it even clearer because at first I was the coach and then with the veteran woman brand, it brought so much more of how I can serve veteran women. That Felicia Phillips is something else. She's, she was, mm-hmm. uh, she's my business coach as well. And yeah, um, yeah. she's an awesome, awesome, awesome woman. Awesome, awesome, awesome woman. So, I'm going to get my next caller on real quick, and I have a few more questions to ask you, but I'm going to have my um, caller. She is one of my uh, loyal callers, um, and she's a, a 40 plus wonders director and um, has her own, her and her husband has um, their own business, um, One Better Community, and mm-hmm. they rehab homes in, in the um, inner city and whatnot, and and um, they're doing awesome things in, in their community in Philly. But I want to invite Kia Jones in. Kia. Hello. Hi, honey. Hey. How are How you? Oh. Hi, Ariel. Nice to meet you. Meet you, too. I'm on my earphones. Am I coming through clear? Yes, you are. You are. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Um, great, great show. I just, I don't necessarily have a question. I did have a question, but actually Ariel has answered it um, as she's been kind of talking, but I just want to first commend both of you ladies for everything that you're doing, because even this radio show and Sky, how you're just bringing people on and making everyone else aware of all the great things that are going on out there, making connections the way you did and just bringing people together, um, you know, who have the same cause and who are trying to do the same thing is just so important because that's really the work that we have to do. You know, we have to come together to be able to do it. So I just Mm -hmm. commend you for doing that and, um, Ariel, all the work that you're doing, um, because I know how it is, because my question was going to be around like the red tape and the bureaucracy and, you know, how do you really make an impact when I'm sure there, you know, can be a lot of hurdles when you're dealing, you know, when you want to deal with like larger organizations or the political arena, you know, with everything that we have going on with the election and things like that. So, for people like you um, and myself, you know, to be able to just do the groundwork and yeah. not let the red tape and bureaucracy bog you down and hold you back from doing what you really want to do. So you just get in there and you continue to do the work. And that's really where we can make an impact. So I just say keep doing what you're doing and Sky continue, you know, bringing people like Ariel to the light and making those connections so that we can really um, get some things done. That was kind of my thing. You ladies just go ahead, Sky. I know you had some other questions, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Key. I so appreciate you so much. Um, yeah. And that's what it's all about. That's that's why I built this platform. It is, you know, I'm, I, I, I just want to help empower and motivate and inspire everyone that comes in contact with 
with uh, 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 Unmuted, Your Voice Matters, 40 Plus Wonders, My Photography, anything. I, there's some way I want whoever is around me, I want them to be touched by me in a positive light somehow, some way. Absolutely. Yep, so, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So I appreciate you, love. Love you, sis, so much. And I just, I, 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 I can't thank you enough for the love and the support that you, that you give me. And um, it's, just, it's just a blessing to have you in my corner. So you just don't know. Thank hey, you. I, no problem. What you're doing is needed. So as much as I can support, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. All right, Kia, we'll uh, stay tight and listen in for the rest of the show. I so appreciate you. Thank sure you, will. Kia. Love you. All right, take care. All right, I have another caller online. Um, caller ending in 6745. 6745. Can you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Caller 6. Okay, they might just want to listen. Ariel, do you have a family? Are you married or do you have any children or? I am not married, and my children consist of three fur babies, um, two <laughs> men of the country, and my cat, yes. <laughs> um, but I am currently single, and yeah, I'm just living life, serving and helping others. So, but my, um, I grew up in Texas, though, so Texas will always be home. Go Cowboys! <laughs> Oh, you know what? But Henry, Henry, he is a diehard cowboy fan. Oh, if only I found him on Facebook. He is a diehard. Oh, we go back and forth about that. We go back and forth. Are you an Eagles fan? Yes, I am an Eagles fan. Um, Anything in Pennsylvania? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm from like I'm from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely, I have to represent. I have to represent Pennsylvania all the way. But Steelers, Steelers, Penguins, Pirates, those are my number one teams. Anything after uh, that is Pennsylvania. I don't. I don't really go. I don't really go out of my territory to Georgia, <laughs> even though I'm. I've been here for over twenty years. You know, I give I let them be, but you know, I I don't veer off. I don't veer off. I don't veer off at all. Um, gotcha. <laughs> let me tell you, I, and I I'm not sure if I shared how I got reignited with my passion. Um, and and like I was telling you, I went right before I turned forty. It was I think I was. Here I turned 40. I, I, I went through a divorce. Um, mm. single, single parent had a little, you know, my son was four, four years old at the time, four or five years old at the time. You know, I lost my home, a car. I've owned a, I, I had at the time owned a planet smoothie at that time. I lost my business. I lost everything. And c- can you only imagine after all these years that you worked so hard um, to get where you are for so many years and it's all taken away from you. And it's like all your money's gone. Everything is gone from you. And it's like, what I'm, I'm with this little kid and what do I do? Mm-hmm. What do I do? And, and it just left me in a depression. Like I was depressed. I was, you know, and I ended up having to go back and work a nine to five just to make ends meet so I could put a roof over my child's head and whatnot. And um, don't get me wrong. My son's father was around, you know, um, helping as much as he could, you know, but just to to be in a position after 40 and, and losing everything and, you know, I felt helpless. I felt I felt like my life was over. What had helped me reignite the passion in my life was strong women that I had surrounding me. Um, I had some positive women in my life that helped nurture me and get me back to where I needed to be. 
And it's so important to um, have those people in your circle Mm -hmm. to help support you and push you and, and understand you and have patience with you. That that's what reignited me are strong women in my life that I have in my life. Definitely. Your, your community means so much, your support system. Um, And sometimes I don't even know like how much they help a person. Like I've been here ready to end my life, sitting in my house, ready to end my life. And I would get a phone call from somebody um, because I used to do direct sales. And one of my team members would call needing to know how much shipping cost or needed to figure out how to deal with one of their team members. And because I'm such a person that loves to help, and I'm always helping people, um, that would help me snap out of that moment. And wow. I tell you just don't realize how, how you saved my life. And it's not always about ha- knowing exactly what to say or having the right thing to say. Sometimes it's just about listening and letting the mm-hmm. person know that you care and you're there. So it's not yep. always about talking, talking, just listen. That's it. That That is yeah. it. And another thing is so many people are afraid to be transparent about what they're dealing with. And a lot of mm-hmm. people are afraid to admit that they're depressed and, and, and admit that they're, they're giving up and, and, um, you know, they don't want to be looked at differently. They don't want people to start, you know, looking at them this certain way and judging them. So it's mm-hmm. kind of hard, you know, I, 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 I pray for those that are afraid to be transparent um, because it's hurting them more than anything. Um, yeah. I, 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 I fear, I just don't, I don't care. I just don't fear anymore of what people think or feel. Um, right now in my life, I just know that I want to be better and do better and have better. You know what I'm saying? And I will do anything in my power to, to, to live a healthy, strong, um, powerful life from this point on. I will no longer al- allow anyone to have or anything have so much control over my being. Yes. And it's so important for us to share our stories because hearing hearing that story, and I know it's, it's a part of the healing process. Everybody's not immediately ready to share their story, but I want everybody to know your story matters because when I finally started hearing, and not that I wish any of what I've gone through on my worst enemy, But when I started hearing that people understood, they had gone through it and they understood and they would share their story and how they overcame those obstacles, it helped me to say, okay, there's hope. Okay, somebody that understands me. I have somebody that's here to support me and help me make it through. And another thing that I learned is when I I wasn't talking about what's wrong is when I was full of shame. So shameful. Mm-hmm. But then when and it and it just weighed me down. But then when I started to share my story, it took away the shame because it wasn't like I didn't want anybody to know. It's more like, yeah, everybody knows now, so there's no shame attached to it. And um and that's and that's a big thing, just sharing your story, realizing that it matters and that it helps take the sh- it actually takes the shame away and it feels more liberating when you do share it. And I, and of course yes. it comes in, in due time. It does. It does. It, it, it took me, it took me a few years, you know, even in the transition period of building 40 plus wonders, um, I was still going through, I was still going through the changes, you know, growing as I, you know, as I was helping others to grow, mm-hmm. actually I, I'm like one of my best teachers, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, because people always tell me, Sky, you need to listen to what you preach, what you say. Sometimes you, you need to listen to yourself, you know, and, and it's so true. So, you know, I, it's just so important. It's just so important to be true to yourself. Just be true to yourself. Once you, once you are able to be true to yourself, man, the sky is the limit. I tell you, 
the sky is the limit. You can you can live your passion. You can you can reignite that that fire in you, but you have to be true to yourself first. So be how do you and be authentic? That's another thing. Exactly. Is just be authentic. Be you because. There's no one else like you in the world. And I know being in business is hard because we're like, well, what about the competition? Or she does it better, or she knows more, or she's prettier, or this and that. And we're constantly comparing ourselves to others. But just be you because no one can do you like Which, you. There you go. Yeah. Once people realize that, oh, my gosh, there's enough for us all to, to succeed and to, to do um, to do well, you know, but we have to understand that. And that's why it's so important to work on your inner beauty, your inner self. Mm-hmm. You got to work on that inner self. Cause that, if, if your inner self is not right, you can't, you can't move up. You can't succeed. You can't move on. You can't go to the next level. You'll still right. be fighting those demons that is keeping you and holding you back from greatness. You will never be at, at, at your greatest potential, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. So it's 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 just something else. Um, you know what? I have another caller, and I'm gonna let them call in real quick. And um, caller ending in two nine one eight. Do you want to say your name and where you're calling from? Caller ending in two nine one eight. Make Are sure you, you unmute. Oh. <laughs> Hello, name's Jason from Manhattan, Kansas. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hi. Pretty good. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for calling in. Real quick, we are down to uh, two minutes for you to um, share what you called in for. I want to hear you be. Uh, I want to hear you get unmuted, and I want to hear your voice. Okay. Well, um, I called in because I know Ariel and uh, wanted to hear what she was talking about tonight on your program. Oh, awesome! Awesome. Well, um, we are talking about her her business, um, the veteran woman, and we our discussion is about reigniting our passion in life. Um, so Jason is actually my best, and he's helped been there while I while I've grown. He's been there through my breakdown and everything. So, and he's actually a veteran as well. He retired what three years ago? Three years ago. He retired wow. three years ago for me. So yeah. Wow, oh, wow. Oh, you have an I, audience. I have to mention that I have two of Ariel's other uh, favorite fans here, uh, Joel Maldonado <laughs> and Perez Jones. And they're all, oh, and they're Ariel. all. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi, <Ariel>. <laughs> well, we thank you guys for calling in. We were just talking about having those supportive people around us that understand us, that help lift us up and keep us going and pushing us and empowering us and motivating us to to do what we need to be doing out there, our passion, like we said. So Jason, I really appreciate, appreciate you. Yeah. Just, just to let her know, we, we are, we dialed in at halftime of one of our basketball games that we're officiating just to hear. That's that's a real friend right there. That's a real friend. Yes. (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, thank you for calling in. I appreciate you. And hopefully you'll uh, come on, um, you know, another time on Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. I always have a real real conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing yourself to be unmuted. Your voice matters. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Sky, I know we're running out of time. Um, I know I gave some quick info earlier, but if people want to talk more about reigniting their passion and finding their passion in life, they can text yes. my ebook to four 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 nine nine nine. That's my ebook to four 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 nine 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 to get my free e- ebook that steps through reigniting that passion and stuff. And then they can, of course, call me for a free consultation. So we can talk about rediscovering that passion. Awesome. Awesome. Ariel. I so appreciate you for coming on today. This was such an important topic 
it's a serious topic. You know, these are, these are people's lives, and I so appreciate you for being transparent with your story and what you're trying to do for um, veteran women. Um, awesome, 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 awesome thing that you're doing. So I, I give um, my hats off to you, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you're doing. And I'll continue to pray for you as well to, you know, um, for you to come up out of, you know, um, your situation at times and, 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 and to move forward and um, come out of that depression and that, that, that anxiety and, um, and that PTSD as well. Thank you so much for what you do, Sky. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, this really meant a lot, and it helped me gain even more clarity and to realize that what I'm doing, it, it matters. It so thank does. you so much. You are so welcome. Well, I want you to ha- um, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bigger things to come in 2017, and I will see you there at the top, honey. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for tuning in to Unmuted Your Voice Matters on Never Had It So Good Sports Media Network. If you want to learn more about Sky Wonders, go to her website at 40plusWonders.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, 40plusWonders.com. Uh, I mean, 40 Plus Wonders, I'm sorry, and Twitter. And if you want to, uh, my personal social media is Sky Wonders, S K Y Y Wonders. Well, I just want to thank you again for all my listeners for always calling in and being supportive. I so appreciate you guys. I can't do it without you. So thank you for always tuning in um, every Tuesday from 7 to 8 on Unmuted Your Voice Matters. I love when you get unmuted. Thank you so much. And next we have at 8 p.m. is Sports Talk Atlanta with Mac Daniel and Travis McGee and Peace Within Radio Show with Henry Washington. All right, guys, happy holidays. We are going to be off next Tuesday. We, um, it will be a replay next Tuesday. So I want everybody to enjoy their holidays, and I will see you um, in January, the first Tuesday in January. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and be safe out there and enjoy your families. Love you. Peace. You've been listening to the Veteran Woman Podcast. If you want to connect with Ariel and let her know what you thought of today's show, be sure to head over to www.theveteranwoman.com and follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Veteran Woman.